So going to Korea, uh, I feel like the last couple of years I've been here a lot because I obviously want to, to improve and Korea is like the main place you want to go to improve. So winning the, the spring split was pretty nice. Um, <laughs> I was happy that after moving to G2 we were still able to, to reach the, the level that, that like I wanted for us and like maybe we can even become even better, right? But, um, but I, I won the previous two splits. Uh, so for me, I knew that, that winning the split was not like enough for me. I wanted us to, to see how far we can go and I wanted, that's why I wanted us to prove ourselves at MSI. Uh, and obviously it was nice to win, win the split, but I already realized like very early on that, that we are going to be really good because everyone played really well together, everyone fit really well together, no one had problems with each other, everything was just like going very smooth. Uh, so that's why I have, I have high hopes for us. Is this paper? Mm -hmm. is, is this paper? Not really. Do you feel any tanglings? No, not yet. Okay. Well, when it comes to Miki and his uh, health issues, um, not sure what to think. I mean, we are screaming with, we are practicing with the uh, Humpus right from his queue, so, uh, and practice is going fine. I mean, there's like no issues. We have practice with him when we were in Europe as well and we were also playing quite well with him so if we are going to play with him I'm confident we can still win every game we are going to be put up against uh, but obviously Miki is like our main player so if he feels fine to play he will he will play games uh, and if he doesn't feel fine then we are playing with Promescu and uh, we can win with both and we can lose with both right so it's just I mean it's up to I guess, and then Miki and our like staff management, if he's gonna play or not, and if he is, well, a lot of people will think we have better chances, but I think we also have like maybe not similar chances with Promise Cube, but we also have like some chance to to win it all. So, so being in South Korea again after three years is kind of fun, but a bit of a downside this time is that I can't play solo queue, or I could, but I probably shouldn't. So. I don't like worsen the situation with my wrists. So I'm just kind of saving myself for now. But yeah, I wish I could just spam Korean solo queue because it's like the best part about being here. And yeah. Film Yankos or film Cups. Yeah, look, cups this is, is the camera. content you're like, looking look for. Look at Cups. No, no, point it down, yeah. Like look at Cups and camera. Cups, is, cups look good on camera. Go, go talk for camera. Go talk for camera right now. No, no. Now he doesn't want to, but usually he likes camera. He's our camera boy in the house. He's so pretty for camera. Hey guys. <laughs> it's me from South Korea. Oh, Hello. Hello. That's kind of racist actually. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you making that accent? Really? But I was <laughs> trying to make cute accent. Okay, no, it's fine. Like cute. Really? It's not racist. Because that's what girls do, no? They do okay. like, hey. Okay, actually, you're not doing it. That's what Cap does. How can you be so sexist? Yeah, That's exactly sexist? what Cap does. What he does? Yeah. Hey guys, it's Caps. Hey guys, Caps here. Hey guys. Okay. <laughs> hey guys! Hey guys, it's me! It's Yankos! Oh South Korea! Woo! Let's go! <laughs> that's like more like it or? Yeah, that's your actually that's good PR. Yeah. Uh the general day of boot camp is like basically we wake up and then some people go eat, some people don't go eat before scrims and uh, yeah, I mean, play solo queue and then we have basically two blocks of scrims, so we start scrim at sometimes like 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. and then we play three hours, then we have two to three hour break and then we play again uh, three hours, so that's pretty much it. So some people will go eat in between, play solo queue and then after people will go eat, like, just depends, right? But, and it varies as well, like sometimes I do something and like sometimes I don't eat before and sometimes I eat, so I don't know. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's basically just play and eat and then that's how, that's how the bootcamp works. I mean, we want to win MSI for sure, right? But for now, we kind of also want to get international experience under our belt as a new G2 team. We didn't play with this roster yet internationally. And I think MSI is a good warm up before Worlds because I can say that we will make it to Worlds no matter what. So I think right now it's very important for us to you know, let Mickey rest as much as he wants to. And then, uh, you know, if he'll play, he'll not play, it doesn't really matter, but we will just try our best 
with what we have, you know. And I think both Promiski and Miki are really good. So um, I'm not sure like about our preparation just yet to win the whole tournament, but we'll just take it game by, by game and uh, see what happens. Do you have the bag? Huh? Do you have the bag? Oh, yeah. We share with Eskitiba, but we have to squeeze it. Wait, what? Are you serious? Yes. Wait, can you extend up so I can look up my fucking legs? Okay, we need to show them that we have so much of the meter jack. Yeah. Okay, can we have top? Are you guys really doing this to me? Yeah. Over there. Pretty much. And now when Faker comes in, we should like. We should do something together. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, like, but, okay. but, but we should do it in a way where they don't know we are doing it like right now as they come in. You know, like we have to like be like we are in the middle of something. Someone tell like a joke. Someone tell a joke, and we all start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, 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 you tell a joke. You tell a joke. Uh, so yesterday. Well, I mean, you have to do it when they come, right? Yesterday we played Shimada against the Shimada. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's yeah, okay. a fucking bad joke. Uh, <laughs> apparently they have a second. Okay, two times against single. Apparently they have a second show. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, so we are not sharing. That's five months. Oh. Oh. oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> fucking disgust me. <laughs> Get me up. Oh, well, well, now now everything got really pointless, and we don't, don't make yeah. jokes. We were about to make a joke and laugh at it when they came in. So we we're like team team running. Yeah. Oh my god, you got something. Like I mean, don't you think it would be like insane mental like advantage? Well, you know what's my secret? <laughs> I wear no underwear. Yeah. Now, now you, now you let it sink in your head. Next time you film me. Actually, like, I'm saving underwear for stage, that's when it matters. Because I don't have like enough underwear, so I just save them for when it matters. <laughs> my teammates steal my underwear in the night. Because they don't wash their own. It's so fucking disgusting. We'll be playing in, okay? So, uh, we'll have to line you up on this side. It would be support, support first. Yeah, that's it. So, we go, so is this the order of play? Yep. So, so we get to support number one. Coach will be right. Coach will be right at the end on this one. Okay, guys. So, um, I and guys, you should know that this is Jason. He's the other stage manager. Jason, give him away. So it might be Jason nice here, Jason. and he'll be doing something like this. He'll just his arm will move, and off you go. And this is your route. Okay. So just go this way. I need everyone to look out for this step right here. Step. Oh, that's actually some nice, nice Look out no, for this step. Look out for this step here, guys. Please move keep your eye. And then the host will be, okay, let's play. I don't even know what that sounds like yet in Vietnamese. <laughs> so I don't even know how you're going to understand what that is yet. But by the end of today, I'll be able to. I wasn't all right, but this will be your own position. And then you'll see the other teams come out there like that side. Yeah. And then you'll get played into the crowd situation. I'm saying opening the game. Take in the applause, it's enjoy the your game. moment, yeah. and then you'll file off round to take up your positions, ready for play. Yeah. Everyone yeah. clear? Yeah. Okay. I, don't think clear. I don't think we need to do it one more time, because you, you guys have nailed it. I wish you the very, very best this tournament, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You, have a great day. You're done? You yep, you're done here. And just well, right now, it's going pretty well with the wrist, because, well, I'm not sure if it was the the acupuncture that I got in Korea and the medication there, but I felt the biggest change was when someone on Twitter recommended me reading a book, and I think it was the biggest life hack I've ever done. And I just read the book; it was like 200 pages, and it was about like physical pain being connected to stress and your like emotions, kinda. And uh, after reading that book. I kind of saw improvement really fast and even now like I don't really feel as much pain anymore as I did in the past and I could I can like do stuff that I couldn't do before well it's kind of it's kind of relief but it also in a way it's a bit like it's a bit uh, catchy situation because it's like I feel like we could have been so much better so much more ready for this tournament as a duo 
but even then with no practice, like we were actually winning our lanes. We all trust in each other, and that's a bit too much. So we win together really hard or we lose together really hard. But now I can like, yeah, do everything normally. So yeah, I think I just yeah, found a life hack and yeah, the guy that recommended it to me on Twitter, yeah, this guy is a savior. It feels very good to be back at MSI after mixing last year. It was basically part of the goal. I mean, it was the goal. The goal was to win EU, and to win EU, you get back to uh, back to MSI, right? It's just a very nice feeling because you feel kind of you feel special because everything that Riot has done, like from the service, hotel, tournament itself, is all like for you, and you're representing your own region. So. Uh, I'm just very grateful to be here. I think that MSI for sure feels less important than Worlds, but I honestly enjoy it a lot because there is a lot of good teams, you know? When you qualify to Worlds, there's like top three teams from every region, but during MSI you play only against the champions of every region, and I think that's very fun, playing against only the best teams and being the best yourself. So it's a great experience. G2 are going to prove what level of play Europe, and more specifically this squad has, on the international stage, because this is where G2 can make or break a name for themselves. He's sitting on that sheen. Caulfield's Warhammer for Perks as he gets caught out. Take a look at the mini-map. Fake is coming from mid lane. Perks gets first blood onto Mata. G2 Esports are teleporting into the base. They're looking for the Nexus turrets with the Baron empowered minions. Nexus turret number one falls. Nexus turret number two is being focused. That's Mata down. Teddy flashes away. That's not over yet. The Nexus turret falls. Ladies and gentlemen watching MSI, do you believe G2 obliterate SK team? Euphoria. G2 Euphoria. G2 Euphoria. G2 Euphoria. G2 Euphoria. I ran it down. I didn't have to die the last moment. You know? uh, I just kind of rippled in because I was like glad that we won. Yeah. And then Silas got me. Shit. Your KDA. Like I should, yeah, I should have saved my KDA. Otherwise, only capsule die. Twice, I think, at once. Yeah. Is this the first time you beat a team with Faker on? In a serious game, yeah, but I already won against Faker during All Stars, and uh, as we all know, All Stars really matters. And we won a fun, fun mode. I was playing Kazik, he was playing Kazik, and I won the one team. G2 are an incredibly creative team. Second for second in the game, they're figuring out how to Rubik's Cube, they're problem solving, they're trying to find these opportunities or create things that most teams don't see. Finally, at long last, it is Invictus Gaming versus G2. And we are on to Summoner's Rift. Ning going forward, looking to maybe find something. Yanko's going to be taking up everybody on the side of IG. He'll be taken down about half. Gargoyle Stoneplay's going to be wearing off. Wonder looking to find some damage into Balon. Caps into the back line of IG. Jackie Love's going to be under threat. Balon taken down. Caps able to find themselves that first kill as the Shy goes on yet another killing spree. He's able to find himself a double kill. Looking to make it even more. And that is going to be the curtain call for G2. Invictus Gaming lose one. They kill five. They get 30 kills in 28 minutes. And IG will repeat their world's performance and take down G2. I feel like, for my personal standards, I feel like my performance should have been a lot better. And there was a lot of like, there was a lot of things that went like slightly wrong, that shouldn't have gone wrong. And I felt like I kind of lost my composure as a player, rather than just as an AD carry as a bottler, more as a whole competitor. Mid, mid, like, we, we are calling to kill mid, but obviously it's really hard because this guy can just like not walk, uh, walk up, right? And, and then bot lane, sure, you guys are like pushing, but the only advantage we can get is like, we can get tower, maybe, if we put Herald, but Herald was really fucking lucky as well because we had no pressure, I just yellowed it when they based. 
Well, I mean, I'm not mad at you, but like, I, know, I mean, it was just I'm unplayable, sorry. you know? That, that's how like, I think. For example, here a mistake we did, and it happened before with Tom Kenshin Mage. Like, we used Tom Kenshin defensively towards mid, even though we know, like, Luka will have pressure bot for like the next 10 minutes, basically, as a mage. And the moment Tom Kenshin ult mid, he goes back bot, we take a fight, and we say we want to take the 2v2. Akai at the piece, we lose the fight, and, and um, Tom Kenshin dies against Sarah Khan. Yeah, I mean, no, it's not, it's not true. I Team Liquid in general are a team that really plays around their jungler. Like all of their playoff games, and now seeing even yesterday, like after Xmithy's first base, his job is literally to find enemy jungler. Like in almost every matchup, he will just go and try and get wards in enemy jungle. He'll try and take the vision plant if it's still up, and he'll find the enemy jungler so that like his bot lane then knows they can play safe. That's pretty much how they do uh, every game. No mercy for you. No worries for you. That game with Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. Our first game of the day. Team Liquid versus G2. NA versus EU. A rivalry as old as time. If you've been playing League of Legends, you must know about it. I'm ready to see how it shapes out. See you, Kyle. Caps going forward. Yankees is here as well. Does manage to land the stun in the shroud. Invisible, but I don't think it's going to be long enough. The flash out. Clutch from Jensen. Yankos wants it. He's going for it. The axe will come through, will connect, and Yankos takes down Jensen. Yeah, definitely they're going to be feeling pretty good about this. I'm not sure that Jensen's going to be able to actually finish this off. And look at Caps going in. Oh, 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 using everything to go and stealing the... Oh, 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 oh Caps is oh, truly oh. terrifying. EU versus NA. It was 4-4 and MSI leading up to this. Jensen tries to get one back. Hopeful to get something here in the midst of the fight. That's the two-man taunt. Caps going to try to end the game. It could just go out here. Can they do it? They can't stop it. G2 come out on top. Such a well-played game from the European representatives here. Flash Wolves at 1 and 2, G2 at 2 and 1. As more mana can do some damage right here, but we're going to try to flag and drag over the wall. Followed up by the Q, and Cap might come in for a little bit more as well. Look at how far he's going. Oh, and gets the Kingslayer in the shield and gets right back out. What a great trade kill. And the MVP is a G2. Caps and Wonder must do the work. There's no ultimate for Wonder, so this is going to be hard. I'm going to try. The dunk going forward. Towards out really good damage. The Rise staying alive. Finds Root flashing back to the pit. All they do is make oh! to close out day two. Okay, yeah, so here I just want to show their support because this team often splits the map either to top or bot lane. So here they, they've split it to bot lane and the support's just gonna base like out of vision and then he's just gonna fucking run at top. And he's gonna link out top, and he does the same for mid as well. So just watch out for that. And if you've not seen him for a while, he okay. could be top. High enough. That is it. Fangvu Buffalo will not go winless. They will knock down G2. They will find that win, kill the Nexus, and in a slugfest of a game, 31 kills in as many minutes. Fangvu Buffalo find G2 Esports as Nexus. What the oh, A huge win for PVB. I, I'm just admitting, I'm lost in game. I, I fought for the ball again, and I wasn't sure what the fuck was like I was doing. But we are not thinking as a team of what how we want to play the game. And I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm stressing out, but I don't, I don't know how to play this fight as well. So I'm, I'm lost in game every game, I, not every game. Last games I play, I don't know how to play. Yeah, most of my time is actually just taken away by my thoughts about the uh, draft, matchups, their playstyle. Etc. What are they good at? What are we good at? And yeah, just basically thinking a lot about the match to be ready for it mentally. So I think going into MSI last year, uh, we were not completely sure about our own strength. Obviously, we came off a world that was like pretty tough, and the uh, eastern teams were a lot better than than the western teams. So it was like we were a bit worried about our own performance. We respected our opponents a lot, and we. Did not really know how well we could perform. But going into this MSI, we obviously come after the worlds where both G2 and Fnatic uh, did really well. And we also had teams like C9 and other teams doing really well. So we have a lot more faith in the West and we're a lot more confident. We're not just here to prove ourselves, we're here to actually win the whole thing.
Here we go, the rematch of the battle for second place. So many people looking forward to seeing these two teams go head to head. The last time, many fans were shocked to see how quickly G2 took down SKT, how effectively they did it. Fair and buff, Faker makes his way into the fight now. Khan gonna be thrown up into the air, Redemption coming down. It's a double kill over to Wonder immediately. Bullet time will not be enough, and G2 grabbing two for free there. Inhibitor number three under siege, Mana trying to get himself away. Glacial Vision to stay alive, but the damage still comes through. Clint finally popping the stopwatch, but it's all too little, all too late, and G2 are on to the Nexus turrets. Those are down, Faker makes his stand, but he'll be buried beneath the X. G2 will repeat the success of the first round Robin and take down SKT. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Like, hit me. I will put it on go, your back. I will put it on your back. Okay, with this one? Give me one, I will put it on his back. Let me do it on his back. Back is like way more like fragile. I may back to this is not cold. It's not cold? That's the other one. Oh! Oh! Uh, the group stage, I think, went fine. I mean, we had, like, of course, goal to make it top four, which was pretty... We, we had, like, high expectations, both from the outside and uh, on ourselves, uh, that we could do well, since, basically, I guess, LMS as a region hasn't been looking too strong so it was basically pretty much a lock for top four in our in our minds at least um, and since I mean we got that we were not sure how good SKT and IG was going to be but it turns out like that they're not bad either and we managed to 2 -0 SKT even though we didn't get second place uh, we still didn't get picked by IG so the outcome is the same uh, so like group stage for me personally has been all right and in theory it's only like playoffs that matters anyways so they don't really have like any advantage of us getting first place or or second place other than I guess IG playing Team Liquid. I think the group stage in general went pretty well because uh, well at the start we were doing pretty well except against IG and PvB and the PvB game was just I think we kind of underestimated them and then uh, after we secured uh, the knockout stage I think we weren't really trying as hard or try harding as much as we could have so we didn't like prepare for our opponents as well as well as we did in the first few days so that's why i think our performance kind of dropped oh, pvb have the backup in the base that they need they have the fans behind them and g2 after that first loss they wanted revenge but pvp said not today <laughs> recognize a lot of our faults and try to work on them and yeah I mean I wasn't too worried because of the last few days because I know that it's gonna be a whole different thing going to best of five so By the end of the group stage, we kind of started playing wars. Um, but I think it's helpful for the team to have some issues and learn from them. So I feel like now, after you know, losing a couple of games and having like a wake up call, basically, and experiences experiencing defeats on international stage as a team, we can grow stronger. I think that there is not a lot of preparation going to semifinals because you don't even have time to play. Uh, you know, we basically fly from Vietnam to Taipei and then from Hanoi to Taipei and then in Taipei we have 
maybe one day of scrims and then the next day already semi-final happens between IG and Team Liquid. So I don't think I have much time to prepare at all. I think it's just basically going through the same stuff again, looking at the comms, looking at the games you, uh, the games you played in group stage and just trying to learn from them, discussing the draft, uh, knowing what your opponent can do. So I think the preparation is more about, you know, talking uh, more than playing. So SKT came in not really looking too hot, but I feel like they improved a lot throughout the tournament. Uh, like especially the last couple of games, they've been looking really, really good. Uh, Faker in particular was playing really well, and I think they are a very strong team going into the playoffs. I mean, I don't know if I would say that they're better than like they're more threat than IG, but they're definitely up there with IG. Uh, even though we went 2-0 against SKT and 0-2 against IG. I still think that they are like at a similar level, at least like their form going into two of the playoffs. Uh, so it's definitely going to be interesting going up against SKT, but I still feel pretty confident. Uh, I don't think our 2 0 necessarily matters. I don't think that will give us any advantage, and I don't think it's like necessarily how the series will go either. Um, but I still feel confident that we will show off and, and in the end take the, take the win. I was pretty like happily scared to face SKT in 2017, where like I expected myself to maybe win, maybe not. And I wasn't really sure of our own ability to win against them. But this time around, I'm I know I'm here to win the whole thing. Even if it's me playing a new role, if it's us not playing with our main support for a long time, like even if all these are obstacles that we like have to had to overcome to even win Europe. We, I'm still confident in us winning the whole thing, and that's just the feeling that you don't really get to have often. So I, I, I don't know if it's SKT or IG. I just want to win, right? Like actually petition <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, you can't ruin any songs because be you're not even close to being accurate. For me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the back. Alright, here we go guys. Three, two, one. Yeah. What's up, yeah? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I'm literally a lion right now. He's a lion. I'm actually a fucking. <laughs> okay, don't put this in the video, seriously. But look, I'm a lion. Woo woo woo! Honestly, this is actually my new thing. I think, Charlie, if this is how you like me, this is what I want to. I'm gonna give you. You are so fucking ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Mickey. Mickey. Am I handsome to you now? <laughs> oh my, what is this? Oh, what is this it's shirt? a phase. <laughs> I'm going through a phase. Oh my god. Wow, That's crazy. I know. I Actually, I want to see baby face on Rasmus. See already has a baby face. Oh, so oh my god, it's so <laughs> cute. Oh my god. Can, can you save it? Oh my god, it's so cute. Oh my god. Can you save it? Yeah, I can save it. Thank you. Hey, uh, did you try Beardson? Oh, yeah, I tried Beardson. Oh, Mickey! Oh, oh Mickey. you're so cute! I think that SKT is really good right now. Uh, I think they had some shaky games. They lost twice against us. I think the drafts were like not so great. I think right now they kind of know how to play the game. I think they improved throughout the tournament. They did even beat IG. I think it's for sure not an easy opponent. 
Uh, I do believe though that they are still a worse team than IG is, so I prefer to play them over IG, and I think we can beat them. G2 Esports have been obliterated in the opening game. Probably that's what, that was the worst yeah. start you can have. Like we just can't do anything. Like, I mean, we, the early game, we just farm and then we go like, because we even like, when Morgana was moving, we like killed him too. I mean, plays yeah. huge. There's just no way we lose five oh, years in a row, right? A little bit of an exchange here. Caps has already used the perfect execution. Goes all the way back in with the flip. Five point strike. Picks up a kill into Mata. Now Yanko's looking for the stun. That's a double kill for Caps. He flashes over the wall. But here comes Korn. Charges into him for devastating effect. That's an interrupt. Devastating charge. Delivers Perks into the back line. There goes Faker. Chasing down the Perks. Perks stays alive for now. Can't find the next act. All of a sudden, though, it's a one for one. Support for AD. Yankos, as well as Cap, get themselves a reply back. Now Cap turns his attention to Khan. Faker's running low. He needs to get some regen. Whoa! He is popped by Cap. Cap's just throwing out every single ability and turning his attention to Khan. It's a quadra kill. Cap goes all the way to the steps of the fountain for a penta kill as G2. Equalize the series at one to one. Oh, not potentially. There is a dive. Faker's actually teleported in. There is the Sanguine Pool. Wonders buying some time. Flash is available to him. Yankos may arrive, but it may be too late. First blood is secured by Clint. Now Yankos gets a reply back onto Faker. I'm waiting for the spell. There's the unburrow, and Clint manages to do it. Gets the uh, damage down, sinks in the fangs onto Yankos as well. Here comes Faker as well with the follow-up stun. It's a double. He's going to walk in, get knocked up into the oh, Look at that! The Queen's Wrath! SKT are just fishing. They've got their fishing rods out. They're looking for targets, and they finally found themselves a G2 Esports member. Faker takes down Yankos. Wanda still stays alive. The transfusion of the Hemoflake kept him alive so long. Protobar goes forward. Tides of Blood is doing work. Needs another transfusion. Hourglass buys some time. That prevents the stun. That prevents the death. Now Perks will get shut down by Clint. And Wanda steps forward. Look at the Samata. Sanguine Pool is thrown down, but the Nexus is being focused. SK Telecom lead the series 2-1. Ever since I've done pretty well personally, and I've got like a lot of spotlight, I guess, from the from the outside, and people are kind of rating me as as a top laner, like top two, with uh, the Shari as the first one. I think it for sure puts more pressure on me. But since I've already played against uh, Khan twice and beat him, and I didn't really feel feel like he pressured me that much compared to like when I played against the Shari, for example, I'm pretty confident going into the matchup against him. But I also know that. We have showed some stuff and now they like have more, I guess, information on us. This is it. Will SKT take it or is G2 bringing us to game five? Here comes Yankos. Remember, no flash, but this is now that is time. Flash forward through the gravity field. That's going to be the end up cost. And first blood conceded. Give it to one. Credit to Caps is your realm warp as well. Oh, who's going to take the realm warp? Cap Perks just misses it. Not in range, may not matter anyway. Mata doesn't have flash available. He's the next target. Impale brings the catfish backwards. Five members of G2 trying to push forward, but the minion wave is getting obliterated. Oh! Just to steal the door. Faker turns around. He hijacks G2's chances. Faker is not done. He's got himself a mega knob. Here comes Wanda. Nor into the wall. Into the crunch. The wallop. Faker gets a reply, but it doesn't matter. Five man party in the chicken camp. And SKT are running for their lives. The G2 classic. They never go for conventional when trying to end the game. Best foot pushing right now. Rise joins the top side. Here they go. All right, Vessel Voyage will deliver Teddy to the back line. But Caps and Wanda are on the Nexus. They will not go quietly. The Nexus is being focused. But look at Faker. Nexus one or two more hits. Very hard on its own. Wanda forces game five. What I think yeah. is, we pick Pike on third, yeah. and then we play that. Agree, what do you think, Wunder? Is that or is it too fucking or is it too crazy? Yeah. Maybe I just picked Sin in the draw. It's fine. Like it's not like it's, I just go stop pushing in second as well, and I got the appeal. Yeah. Honestly, it's gonna be fucking. It's gonna be glorious. Like when they get when they yeah. see the Sin bot, like. These two drafts are the epitome of a bucket stylization. <laughs> and we get to see which one reigns supreme and advances to the MSI finals.
Khan is going to be helping out. Caps is going low. Antaro once again clears the first target. Jump from the low. Caps is coming in. Frozen tombs available in a few seconds. Unleash power plus point rush. That gives one to the LEC representative. Mata gets caught in the winds of war. And Europe get two. Oh, here's Winder. Fake has got flash available. He's rooted in place. Caught by Lissandra. Ultimate and he's killed from below. And it's SKT that are continuously coming out on top of these fights. Wonder now has just spotted Mata. All right, he has indeed, but look at the stun. That's just massive. Tammy gets the shutdown goal. Six, one, and five. The gold lead truly doesn't mean a thing. And SK Telecom, they might be able to burn Baron. Baron has been interrupted. Teddy is trying to step forward. The taunt is going to come out. Caps is trying to find the kill. Mata's in trouble. Fake is low, but they've already got one into Mata. Where is Teddy? Follow his HP bar. Khan flashes up the wall. Teddy's dead. Yankos is in the pit. G2 Esports have been gifted and donated a Baron from SKT. That's a dunk from Wonder. Death from below for the double, for the ace, for the Baron and the base. G2 obliterate SKT. Look at all the death timers. They're looking to stand there. And make their way to the final. Champions can fall, gods can bleed. Where were you when the West rose up to conquer champions? G2 Esports eliminates SK Telecom. I tweeted another uh, My Hero Academia gift. And we did, wow, finally went less than five deaths on Galio. I think I was less than five deaths, was I? I think it was only three or four. Last game? Yeah. Nice. I guess KT, it was really hard, and I think that in the fifth game we prepared really well and we kind of caught, caught, caught them off guard with our mage pick on bot lane uh, and counter pick on mid lane. So I think it was really creative from us. It was really good that we did it because we can, couldn't really win any draft on like red side without doing it. And, you know, we lost like. We won every blue side game and lost every red side game up until that fifth game where we kind of surprised them and we won. So I think it was it was good by us. Tinek beating IG was a big surprise to me and to the whole team. I mean, to everyone, I guess, in the world, right? Uh, we really expected to face IG in the final. But once we're facing team in the final, we should take the win. And the only thing that could actually stop us is us getting overconfident or complacent. And I made sure to not have any emotions take over my action for today and focus on the victory. I mean, so I don't think winning at a tournament makes up for <laughs> losing a tournament in the past. I lost at Worlds, I lost Worlds before and MSI as well. And all these things will always be a thing for me. There will always be something that, that kind of like be my, my failures I will always have in the back of my head, right? Even if we go on to win the next 10 MSIs and Worlds, uh, I will always have these MSIs and Worlds where I, I lost. Uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I obviously learned a lot from it, and I took a lot away from it. But I just want to do better in, in the future. Bow, after Bow, it's that magical moment where he gets a left and strength to get as a team. Losing is not enough. We should just accept that if we lose, you it sucks. You realize that I've got every team, I'm all serious right now, right, Cup? So I'm getting it this time. <laughs> This game, our comp is really good playing on tempo. Talk towards each other. We don't have to win the game in 10 minutes, okay? Play yeah. it slow. If you lose position, that is fine. Yes. Just trade. Playing towards the back, the slowest. They're not going to find one. And they're burning down Core JJ. First blood for G2 in the final. They Smith, he has to run for the hills as TP comes in from an extra member. And Wonder's gonna find one as well. Impact is Summonerless, he's trying to get away from the slows. He's got Core JJ, but Yanko finds the knockup. Now trying to theory him to safety, pushed away, but Mickey X finds it again. They look for the kill and the support, and they will get yet another. It's 11 to 2, and G2 cannot be stopped. Bottom and Hib will drop its turret at the very least. Team Liquid gonna back off a nice bind. Is this the engage? He's gonna be grabbed by Core JJ, but here comes the duck, and here's the engage by Wonder once again as they look for these kills. A big charm and a knockup in the back. Line. It's already one kill. Make it a second as the team look of members are falling fast and furious. G2 Esports in commanding fashion will take game one of the 2019 MSI Finals. Because for this game, one really good thing besides what happened top, discipline was really high. You caught each other off. We put on tempo mostly. 
where I spent time can shot. It was a really good game with tempo and communication. So I'm really happy with the game so far. Um, I mean, I think in draft it's just really important as well regarding all we say is that we unlike unless like unlike the game two against them in groups, we don't give them the free early game. Yeah, uh, honestly, groups. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Don't care. I trust you. over. is on for game two of this best of five final. Nearly picks up the kill and the reinforcements are in. A stop by Fern and in goes Cannon trying to turn it around. One for zero, make it one for one. Wonder is now dead. It's 50 trying to stay alive with the kills. Just come through fast and furious. Attempt for impact. They find a slow. They find almost a stun and Yanko's going to burn the stopwatch. This could be the team fight. In they go as he's still slicing Maelstrom. And it is just that. Slicing up Team Liquid. And suddenly it's one versus the world and he cannot stop it. A clean ace and even as fast as the last one. G2 look at a sub 30 minute win and they are a single game away from your first ever MSI trophy. Again, it felt hectic in the early game. Like Django said to say, like 10 minutes of the game, we scale fine until we actually calm down. Like again, we don't have to win the games in the first 10 minutes, right? It's good for us if we have the lead. But if our champ is allowed, we can give us also fine. Like they had all of this game, for example, right? Okay. So let's play the map normally. If something opens up, go for it. If not, play around the jungler. Just our mid support communication was really fucking good. Yeah, man. I think what makes our team good is that, well, we have really good ke team chemistry. It seems like everyone kind of gets along each other very well and we have no conflict. And I think no conflicts are sometimes, like it's bad that you have no conflict. I think a team needs to have conflict and because that's how we kind of improve, that's how we get experience and that's how you grow. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we did have like some, some situations where we had to like say stuff to each other, but it's like way less than in other teams I've played so far. And except for that, I feel like, you know, we are really open-minded, really creative. So that's why we have all those weird peaks like Pike top lane or Syndra bot lane, you know, everyone is good enough to play those champions. And uh, except for that, everyone listens to each other, you know, gives feedback. So I just feel like we have everything we need to succeed. Certainly, this is the EU super team. They had an extremely dominant split. They dominated the finals. And now after taking down SKT, they're one game away from securing their first international championship. Nice juke by Cap, but will be hit a little bit. Nice little sun comes in. Oak comes in as well. He's got a lot of a flagrant to play around with. They find that first run. They find some daily, but Ignite means he will get the solo kill on a 1v2. And Caps tries it for Jensen. And here comes Instead, the base is being seen. They are being taken down right now. G2 unwilling to be stopped. The turret's still in their eyes. Brothers fly, and G2 will pull back. That's a big stun! That's a big engage! Oh my gosh, look at the fight! They look for kill number four. This might be an ace inside of the base, inside of 18 minutes. The main inhibitor will surely fall. And G2 ripped through the hearts of Team Liquid and North American fans as they secure themselves in the top of the world. There is no chance TL comes back from this. They're already on the Nexus turrets. This is what peak League of Legends looks like. And it comes from Europe. A world record. G2 Esports 3-0 will win MSI 2019. And then I just fucking died as well after I jumped in. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, perks and perks and caps. We can we can go to the analyst desk. Uh, they said they were gonna pick us up here. I think. This is me picking you up. <laughs> so I think going into 
uh, MSI last year. I did not really know what to expect, but going out of it, I was a lot more confident in my team and, and my region, EU. Uh, I think from then on, I started believing a lot more in us being able to compete at the highest level. And I think this MSI proves that EU is one of the strongest regions, if not just the strongest region. Uh, and I think we still have to prove that we can stay at this level. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, like SKT, IG, we're probably looking at each other as like the main enemies. And suddenly we come in out of nowhere and, and take the take the throne. But for the next worlds, a lot of people are gonna look at us and a lot of people are gonna look at EU. So it's gonna be more difficult to, to win. But uh, I still believe that, that we can improve enough that we can win. I don't think it has quite sink in yet that we won or like the significance of it or whatever because I feel just fine right now. Uh, obviously I'm very happy that we won. It would be worse if we lost and yeah it's just insane to think if it's, it's easier to think like from retrospective because when I was playing mid it was it seemed very hard for me to win. Even actually last year it seemed doable though. And so it just shows how much best has improved in general. And yeah, I'm just I don't know, I'm just super grateful, right? It's it's quite the it's quite something that me moving to a new role would actually result in me winning my first international title after only three months of playing with this team. It's to think of it as a like as an outsider or like as not part of it. It seems just quite surreal. Yeah, it doesn't even seem like it's it's human, you know. It seems like it's actually just God's plan for us to win this tournament, and yeah, we were just meant to win. <laughs> that's that's how it felt. That's how it feels to me. <laughs> Champions, we are the champions. No time for losers, cause we are the champions.